Are the SALT deductions coming back? Are they making a comeback? Well, new legislation, hope so. I'll explain, coming up. My name is Mike Bernard, I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. All right, so the SALT tax deductions. Are they making a comeback? So let me explain what these are, and then I'll share with you some new legislation that hopes so with some contingencies. So the SALT tax deduction is actually an acronym, most things in finance are, and it's state and local tax deduction, okay? So what this is, is when you, when you file your taxes, you get a choice to add up your deductions in certain different categories, and if that all adds up to a higher number than your itemized, excuse me, than your standard deduction, then you can take the higher number. That's that itemized uh, amount. If when you add up your expenses, your deductions in these certain categories, it isn't as high as the standard deduction, then you get the standard deduction. Okay, so back in the uh, when when the Trump administration rolled out the Trump tax cuts, whatever they're calling it, but everyone refers to it as the Trump tax cuts, they doubled effectively, they doubled the standard deduction and as a way to make filing your taxes more simple. If you remember, they said, oh, you'll be able to do your taxes on a postcard. Yeah, no one believed it and it wasn't true. Okay, so, um, but we'll, we'll make the standard deduction so much higher, so few people will need to itemize, your taxes will be much simpler. Well, in addition to that, they applied a cap, a limit, on the amount of state and local tax deduction, this SALT deduction, as part of that itemized deduction, okay? So it certainly made it so that a lot of people didn't itemize because there is now suddenly this cap. When you look at your itemized deductions, that Schedule A, you, you get to deduct your out-of-pocket medical expenses above a certain amount, you get to deduct your state and local taxes now only up to a certain amount, $10,000, okay? Your mortgage interest and some of your mortgage-related expenses, and then charitable donations, charitable givings, okay? So all of that, those are the areas, if you add that up and it's higher than the standard deduction, you get to take the, uh, the, the itemized, you get to take that higher amount. So when they put this cap on state and local taxes, this SALT deduction cap made it so that a lot more people would itemize and it was, um, if you were previously getting a huge tax benefit from these SALT deductions, you no longer got that. So people that live in, or let's just say people that pay a lot of state taxes, okay, so live in a state that has high state tax rate, um, or have really high property taxes, okay? So that also depends on where you live, either the state or the, the area in which you live. If you have high state taxes, high property taxes, this has been a very frustrating tax change, okay? And it's very political as well. So there have been people saying, we've got to bring the SALT tax deduction back, have been saying it ever since the change came out. People have been trying to reverse it. Legislation has been trying to reverse it. Now, I see both sides of this. In a way, you are deducting from your federal taxes the amount of state and local taxes you pay and property taxes you pay. So basically, it's a way to manage double taxation. I'm, I want zero taxation, so I certainly want to do everything possible to limit or avoid double taxation where you're having to pay a state tax and then federal tax. So I like the premise of making sure that you can deduct your state and local taxes and property taxes uh, uh, from, your, from your federal uh, uh, tax return, okay? But ever since this thing was rolled out, there's been, there's been claims, well, we're going to get rid of this, we're going to remove this cap. Well, there's legislation being pushed around right now that's aiming to do that. That's right, a couple of U.S. representatives um, from New Jersey and California, of course, high tax states, high property tax states, are have proposed some legislation that would remove and make some changes to the SALT cap, okay? So here's how their proposal would work. It would remove the cap for anyone that's make, that has income less than $400,000. We've heard this number of 400,000 thrown out a lot, that that's the benchmark. If you make more than that, then you've gotta pay certain taxes or certain things don't apply to you. And so this one also, under 400,000, there's no cap on your SALT tax deductions. If you make above 400,000, it begins to be limited, but that limit is only on each 100,000 you make above that, so it's completely phased out by the time your income is a million bucks or more. 
Do you like it? Obviously, if, if you're in a high uh, state tax rate or high property taxes, yeah, this, this would be beneficial. There's no talk in here, not that I've seen, about bringing that standard de deduction back down. This would just be removing the, uh, the cap on the salt, so you'd still have higher standard deduction, but if by removing that salt cap, if you were able to get a larger amount for itemizing, then you'd be able to claim you'd be able to claim that. Now, keep in mind that the current laws for this SALT uh, deduction cap only go through 2025. So a change is going to need to be made at some point unless we kick the can down the road. But interesting, okay? I, I'm, I'm in favor of this proposal. Let's, let's, let's see how it plays out. What chance is there of this thing passing? I think Congress has plenty on their plate right now. And uh, like I said, there's been a lot of talk about this thing being changed at some point. I think from a political standpoint, things would need to um, slow down and quiet down. Maybe this is something that picks up right before midterms if we're allowed to, like if we get a breather from some of the, the, uh, the, the, the greater political issues and national issues going on, uh, global issues really. And so, so we'll see, I'm not holding my breath and I would tell you, don't plan off of this just yet, okay? So as you're doing your tax planning, it's a prudent right now to be thinking about, well, will I itemize my deductions or get a standard deduction? And therefore what tax planning choices should I make? What opportunities exist for me to improve my tax situation? I would not at this point plan on the salt cap being removed. Maybe if some of your planning decisions like maybe uh, doubling up or, or stacking some estate planning contributions, doing a donor advised fund, something like that, if that is connected to um, itemizing your deductions, maybe you get a rough game plan in place, but you don't execute that plan until later in the year just to see if this thing does get some traction. But right now, I wouldn't plan on it passing for sure. Things need to quiet down. Congress has a lot on their plate right now. We'll see if this gets some momentum later on in the year. Work with your CFP on tax planning, making sure you're looking at all tax all opportunities to improve your tax situation. Take advantage of the most important ones. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team. Find us online, cohorn.com. That's cohorn with a K. Wisemoneyshow.com. You can find us there as well. Or give us a call, 574-247-5898. All right, there you have it. Go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.